morning from Belgrade in Serbia. Country number 55, brand new country for both me and Ash, so excited to explore the capital. Um, our plan today is really just to get to know the city a bit better, explore some of the local sites, some of the main attractions, and see what the biggest city in the Balkans has to offer. So come with us as we explore here in Belgrade. Our first stop this morning is this huge Orthodox church behind me. This is the St. Sava church and it is the largest Orthodox church in all of the Balkans and it's a pretty impressive sight. Another cool fact about this place is they actually began construction in the 1930s and they only finished it in 2004 and it looks like they're still doing some work on it. We've just come around to another angle around the cathedral and we're walking through this lovely park. It's Sunday morning, it's full of like dog walkers and couples and families and just, you know, it's a really nice kind of vibe. It's warm, which we've not experienced in a while. Um, but yeah, I think you can see the size of this cathedral, it's insane. It does kind of remind me a little bit of Istanbul and the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia in terms of size. I think it's similar, maybe, maybe not. You can let us know in the comments, but it seems that size. Yeah, wow, what a, what a place, what a building. This is the second cat we've seen on a car, literally in the same row of cars. Must be comfy. One thing we've both noticed since walking around Belgrade is the differences between the architecture. Where we're living, there's lots of kind of like communist style buildings. And as we get closer to the center, it's a lot more kind of like Austrian Hungary kind of style buildings, like really kind of royal looking buildings. And then when we arrived on the bus, we drove past what's known as Belgrade Waterfront. And that looks kind of like Dubai, futuristic, really modern and expensive looking buildings with light shows and everything like that. So it is a complete mix of architecture here in the capital city. Just been walking around Belgrade city centre as we get closer to the public square. And we've just stumbled across this hotel called Hotel Moskva or Moscow. And this is meant to be one of the most premium hotels in Belgrade. And you can tell by the architecture that I imagine it's pretty fancy rooms inside. But what's also interesting is you've got this hotel and then across the street you've got completely different architecture, kind of brutalist style. So it's like two worlds colliding on one street. We're here in Republic Square. Now you might not know this, but behind the stage that has been set up behind me is the National Museum. But we can't really get much of a view of it today, and that's because it's actually Hogmanay, as we would say in Scotland, but New Year's Eve. So tonight there's going to be a big party, a big fireworks display, which we will show you later. But yeah, there's not much we can see unfortunately here. Cool place though. There's also like the Christmas market set up because in Serbia, because they are Orthodox Christian, they, celeb they celebrate Christmas on the 7th of January. So actually, we have another Christmas celebration to go in the next week. Because we're going to do it too, <laughs> why not? Thank you. Thank you. So we just found the best coffee spot in Belgrade. The sun is out, it's absolutely roasted, isn't it? I did not expect this on the 31st of December to be sitting like in a hoodie, like sweating. Um, but it's so nice. So we're just having a coffee break. And then I think it'll be time to get some food. Yeah. We've 
just found a market, so of course we're going to go and have a look. It's so busy in this market. I love how colourful everything is. Look at the strawberries. They're like bright red. They're also 800 dinners, which is like seven quid, six quid. So we won't be getting them. It's a Sunday, so it's super busy. I think in those guys' plastic bags, because it's dripping with blood, it's definitely like cut to meat. <laughs> And it smells like Pomegranates. It's all in Cyrillic writing. Something I've seen a lot of here as well are chestnuts, which I don't really see back home. They're everywhere. This market goes on forever. Look at all this. This literally makes me just want to buy everything. But I know we can't because we won't use half of it. Christmas trees everywhere and that's obviously because they haven't celebrated Christmas yet so everyone's still putting their trees up and decorations and ready for well the 7th of January the celebration and also behind us is a bakery that we're about to go and get some lunch Burek got the goods. We've got cheese burek and plain burek. We do. Well no, cheese pie because she didn't have any of the flat pie so we've got like the single ones. So let's go find somewhere to eat and enjoy. Yep. Okay so I've got the cheese, cheese meal, cheese something. It's like big fat pastry filled with cheese. Oh. Look at this. Just what you want on a Sunday morning. Oh yeah. Like it's really it is really salty, but like the pastry is a lot kind of crispier than in the last um the ones we've had in Bosnia the cheese is quite salty but it just it seems like a kind of different style of cheese winner from me this is us on to pastry number two and this is the plain one isn't it this is the plain I think in Serbia they actually call it borek rather than burek which we had in Bosnia but let's see how this one compares because Bosnia's was very, very good. I know, and we had enough of it to be able to guess. Oh, look at this. So there it goes. This is just the plain one. Oh my god, it's so. so I think it's just pastry and maybe flaky. potato or something. There. It looks good. Flaky pastry. Oh, 
It's a basically just like deep fried pastry. It's very nice, but <laughs> kind of needs a filling. We did try to get the cheese one. Ah, uh, yeah, it they was were sold out, weren't they? Um, but we do have plans to try some more burek borek whilst we're in Belgrade, so stay tuned for that. You might recognise this fountain behind me and that's because it's an exact replica of the one you'll find in Pigeon Square in Sarajevo, Bosnia. This is actually a gift from Bosnia but only comes with a fountain rather than the 4 million pigeons that was in Sarajevo. So it's pretty cool. So we are just walking to the fortress here in Belgrade. But we're actually walking up along a street with quite a funny nickname. And this street's called the Strajica Bana. And it's in the part of downtown Belgrade, but it has quite a funny and unique nickname. It's called Silicon Valley. And that's not because IT experts or anything like that live here on this street. It's because in the 90s when Serbia was at war, the Mafia lived here and kind of controlled this area. And a popular thing among the Mafia's girlfriends was enlarged female body parts with silicon. So you can kind of guess what that is. But I thought it was quite a funny nickname, something that we learned whilst we were here. Thought I'd share the story with you. And that's the story of Silicon Valley. Just walking into the fort, and as you walk past, like what would be the moat, so <laughs> someone sat like for their Sky TV. And there's a house down there as well. I did not expect that. Especially didn't expect the satellite to be sat in the grass. We've just reached the top of the fort and the view all over the river. It's nice. So cool. We've arrived at the Belgrade Fortress. So far, this has been the busiest tourist attraction here in Belgrade. It's located in this lovely park. It offers great views over the Danube River as well. And I'm sure it's incredible here at sunset too. But you get views over the Danube this way and we're away to check out the views of the downtown waterfront area over at the other side in just a moment. But definitely worth a visit here at Belgrade Fortress. just outside the fort. I mean, I wouldn't call it small, there's yeah. about 30. What's weird is about the olden style tanks is they're actually quite small versus like the modern ones. Like that cream one there, doesn't look like it could fit many people, maybe four. But I remember seeing one in Riga when we were there and it was absolutely huge. Yeah, it was massive. But yeah even more to see here at the Belgrade Fort. So once you're done seeing the military setup, come through the walls of the fort. And if you want, you can go and see some dinosaurs. This park is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I'll go over the fence a little bit. Big T-Rex in the background there.
So we're just walking along Belgrade waterfront now and it feels like we've basically been transported into a brand new city. Um, all the buildings are incredibly modern, huge skyscrapers, everything like that. Basically a polar opposite to where we were before in the old town and on the main shopping street where the kind of old communist style buildings were. But it's a beautiful day here. We've enjoyed the waterfront, but I think it's time to sit outside with a beer. So let's go and find a bar where we can get a local beer called Lab. We have managed to track down a beer finally. It took longer than expected and took a bus ride, but we got here. Um, it's pretty lively already around Belgrade Centre. We've come back into like the city centre and it's like, you can probably hear, it's very loud. There's just people everywhere, celebrations have started and the music is, yeah, going. But Belgrade's been really cool actually. Today's been a really good day. We saw, I think we saw quite a lot. We walked a lot. My feet are absolutely killing me, so this beer is very much well earned. But yeah, Belgrade's really cool. There's still a lot we need to see, but I think for our first day we did very well. And I'm excited that tomorrow will be more of a foodie day, because that's more my kind of thing. But Dan, have you enjoyed it? I've loved it. It's a good mix of old, new, yeah. walk by the river, the fortress, the yeah. St. Sava Cathedral. The views from the fortress were nice. We've seen. Really nice. That was probably my highlight, the fortress views. Yeah. Good I atmosphere, agree. good views. Yeah. Nice so, place. So far from us, Belgrade. Cheers. <laughs> Giovelli. Well, that's the end of our day exploring Belgrade. Um, it's been a really cool city. We've seen loads of sites, we've crammed so much in mm -hmm. in a day. But uh, what have you thought of Belgrade? First impressions, love it. It's been really cool. Um, excited to see a bit more, try some more food, especially. And yeah, just see a bit more of this cool, cool city. It's been really cool. Like, we started off at the church, the St. Seva Orthodox Church. And then we moved through the city, saw the fortress, saw the old kind of town, and then at the end we kind of saw the brand new futuristic kind of Belgrade. Yeah, so we've seen old through to new, and it's been yeah. quite like a contrast, which has been pretty cool. Um, definitely worth a visit this city, mm -hmm. and excited to see more next time we find some of the local food. Yeah. So yeah. join us for that.